my name is Christian Hernandez, uh, Senior Principal Technical Marketing Manager. And I always say that's like the longest um, title, I think, <laughs> out of everyone, as in, anyone I meet. But I'm really, um, I'm, I'm also the GitOps advocate here at Red Hat. And um, I'm going to be um, talking to you about how to get started with GitOps, right? And so this is kind of a question that I know I get a lot. I know um, a lot of other um, people on the Open GitOps um, working group get this as well. A lot of people, you know, we, we had Open GitOps, um, sorry, GitOps Con here in North America, KubeCon, um, and we got that question asked a lot. So I'm going to be talking about, um, you know, basically how how to get there, right? You know, you you, you want like a a a, uh, a path on how to get to GitOps. Um, so first, let's talk a little bit about what is GitOps in general, right? Let's let's lay lay the the lay of the land. I'm not going to go into it too deep. I'm pretty sure the other presenters have a lot uh, with respect to what is GitOps. So I'm going to be talking high level here, but just to kind of set the stage. Um, I always love using this quote because I think it's spot on, right? So Chris Short, um, who is a CNCF ambassador um, via the New Stack podcast, right? And that's the episode there. So you can actually hear him say this, but he said that in uh, 2018, he said, GitOps is a holy grail of DevOps. And, um, you know, I, I love this quote because I not only think it's, it's like a spot on observation, but it's also indicative of how DevOps has evolved into like to the forefront of, of, of how to manage a system and the software delivery uh, system um, and, and, and the actual systems that manage the, the, that software as well, right? So um, De DevOps was here before cloud native. And so um, DevOps also had to evolve, right? As, as we got into the, you know, as, as Kubernetes hit, hit the, hit the scene and cloud native architecture hit the scene, um, you know, pe people were doing automation before then, um, you know, with, with various things and, you know, DevOps, since the practice had to evolve, um, you know, GitOps is the way the, um, that DevOps had to evolve. Right. And so, um, as, as I was saying before, GitOps isn't necessarily anything new. Um, GitOps, at, as, as a practice, looks very similar to DevOps, right? And we, I, I keep going back to DevOps because um, GitOps is is DevOps. If if you if you you know drill down to it and you really think about it, it's really how how it's how DevOps operates a cloud native uh, ecosystem, really, right? And so. It's essentially it's like okay we have DevOps we have the DevOps practices we had things in the past like like Puppet and um, uh, you know Terraform we had you know um, all, all these automation tools all these scripting um, how does that look like in a cloud native ecosystem and the answer is really really GitOps right so um, and and the idea with GitOps and it stems from the idea of infrastructure as code. Uh, well, we treat everything as code, right? And so we, we treat not only the infrastructure, but the, also the deployment mechanisms and also the management, more importantly, um, via, via Git workflows. Via Git is a single source of truth. And since the declarative nature of Kubernetes allows us to um, um, have a, a declaration, right? Like this, this is how um, uh, a declarative instead of an imp imperative approach to managing a system it just fits right in, right? Like, let's just leverage that. Let's leverage the fact that uh, Kubernetes reconciles everything. Let's take that same approach to managing the entire system. And so, um, um, you know, so it, it's, it's kind of like that whole idea of, of, uh, of, of, of taking infrastructure as code and kind of just applying it all around, right? And so I believe GitOps, GitOps really is the proof that DevOps works, right? The, 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 even the ability that we're able to do some of these things means that like DevOps, yeah, it's, it's kind of like the, the Mandalorian, right? Like if you guys watch the Mandalorian, this is the way, right? Like there's really, it, it's a natural progression of how to manage a cloud native ecosystem. And, um, and actually Dan Garfield, who, who you'll hear um, speak um, later on today, um, he, he came on my, my stream. So shameless plug, I, I do a um, GitOps Guide to the Galaxy biweekly stream. He actually came onto my stream and, and well, you know, we had a chat about GitOps and um, and he said, really, the GitOps is things we've just been wanting to do this whole entire time. But now with cloud native architecture, we're actually able to do it, right? So like, you know, things that we've been trying to do this whole time with things like, um, you know, like, like Puppet or Chef, right? I was a big Chef guy in, in, back in the day. 
Um, and, you know, with, with VM snapshots and, you know, all, all these weird, you know, scripting tools, um, we can actually now do it natively, right, with, with Cloud. And now we actually can do it. So before it was a pipe dream, now it's actually possible. And, um, you know, I'm going to end this kind of little um, part here of what is GitOps. Um, GitOps is really what DevOps looks like in practice. And I, I think another way to think about it is DevOps. DevOps is the culture and, de and GitOps is the practice, right? And so um, especially when dealing with cloud native, uh, uh, the cloud native infrastructure, cloud native ecosystem. So, um, so how to get started, right? So this talks about how to get started, how, you know, what's the path, all, all this, all this cool things. Um, so how do you get, so how do you get, how do you get started, right? So if there's really real prerequisite, you know, like if, if you want to know, you know, if you want to talk to me, if you want to, um, you know, if this was actually like a gathering, you sit me down with a beer or a beverage of your choice and you ask like, okay, you know, what do I need to do? Really? You need to get started with DevOps and to, to get started with GitOps is really, you need to get started with DevOps. And it, it's really a, as cliche as it sounds, it's the truth. You need to start with your culture first, right? So um, your organization needs to be ready in order to utilize GitOps um, to its fullest potential, right? So I, I go back, I, I love quoting people. I quoted Dan, I quoted um, Chris Short. I, I'm, I'm gonna, next I'm gonna quote uh, Kelsey, Kelsey Hightower in 2018, right? Kelsey Hightower at PuppetConf. So you can actually uh, search for this on YouTube. Kelsey, Tyre, uh, Kelsey, Kelsey Hightower in 2018 at Puppet, PuppetConf said, you cannot rub Kubernetes on your situation and make it better. So the same is true for GitOps. So you can't use GitOps to try to fix your organization. That's not how it works. You need to fix your organization first in order to use GitOps, right? That fix, right, that you're that you're looking for, is to adopt GitOps culture. And so, um, you know, prerequisite DevOps. I always put the Phoenix Project here. I think it's it's required reading from at this point from anyone um, in, in in technology. Uh, if you haven't read it, you know, it's it's um, it's a great book, good read, fast read, amazing. Um, and so, you know, a lot of times when I say that you need to adopt get, uh, DevOps first, people get dejected and, and I totally understand, especially people in large organizations, right? And so um, I always say crawl, walk, run, right? So let, let's don't take a bite of, of that, the entire pie all at once, right? You know, take, 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 take smaller steps as long as you have that goal in mind, um, you know, for many, adopting a new culture is a daunting task, and, and I totally get it. I, I know someone, um, you know, a CIO level, actually personal friend, who he basically he wants to um, change the culture, right? He just took on the position, and it's a daunting task, right? And uh, for many organizations, you know, they, they, they take a few years to change their culture, even before researching any tool, any before researching any technology, um, you know, right away as technologists, we want to jump on like, oh, you know, what's the coolest thing? It's all right. I'm a geek too. I'm wearing an Argo shirt. Obviously, I'm a geek. I love it. I understand it. But really, it's, it starts with the culture, right? And and but but for many, there it, this isn't an option really, um, and it's not feasible for many organizations, or at least it doesn't seem like it, right? So uh, one method that I see out there is that um, for siloed organizations, and I really actually I should use a better word for um, uh, for departmentalized organizations, right? They, they make the change at the department level within the, for, within the, the immediate group, right? And so I think making an immediate impact within your own group can do wonders, right? I, I've also known organizations that cause company-wide, so like some teams that cause company-wide change just by being an example, right? Um, and, you know, it, and that actually does, it does work. It's really cool to see it work where it's like, you know, uh, the whole entire organization will, hey, look, why is that team delivering fast and often? And, you know, and, you know, their uptime is really high. Like, well, what are they doing? So, you know, again, I'm, like I said before, this is a really philosophical uh, talk that, that I do. So, but as cliche as it sounds, be the change you want to, you want to, you want to see. And also don't take the bite out of that pie holistically, right? So prerequisite, adopt, uh, DevOps, look into DevOps, understand the culture first, then you'll be able to jump on to GitOps, right? And so, so you know, if you're here, if you're, you're probably, um, you know, some of you are saying, all right, you know, I'm, I'm already adopting DevOps. 
you know, or I'm close to it, right? Or I just want to know the best practices of GitOps to see if it, it actually, you know, what I have to change, right? So I'll pull the curtain back a little bit more, um, get a little bit deeper, and I'll just talk about GitOps best practices as a whole, right? Um, and, and I know I said you shouldn't, you should focus on processes first before you look at tools, right? But like, you know, it's hard to avoid it sometimes. Again, like I said before, uh, I'm a geek. I jump the gun sometimes, you know, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of it as well. Um, but it's important to get familiar with kind of the things you'll see out there, right? And um, and when you Google like GitOps tools, two tools come up front, right? Argo City and Flux. And so um, Argo City and Flux are what we, um, I like to call GitOps, um, the GitOps controller, GitOps operator. I don't know what you want to call it, but it sits on your Kubernetes cluster and makes sure that your Kubernetes cluster is constantly in sync with your, um, you know, essentially a Git repo, right? It's called GitOps. Um, and they're both CNCF project. They both have large communities. So it's really up to, um, it's really up to you, right? Doing your testing and see which one works best for you. Um, you know, they're both widely adopted. Um, and so, you know, you, you, you're lucky in that respect of like, you, you, whatever you choose, you can't really go wrong. Um, they're Kubernetes native and cloud native. Uh, cloud, uh, native. So they're, they're, they're built specifically for this task. And, um, you know, another thing is templating. And I'm going to go to templating uh, deeper in a little bit. Um, but templating, um, you'll, you'll, you'll see Helm and you'll see Customize out there a lot. Uh, customize a patching framework built into Kubernetes. And Helm is like the de facto package manager, right? And I'll go deeper into them in, in the next few slides. And then you'll see things like cluster management, right? So you'll see things like uh, open cluster management or at Red Hat, what, um, that's the upstream, but Red Hat we call ACM, right? Red Hat um, um, ACM. So um, the cluster manager, right? And so application cluster management. And then you'll see like things like Ansible, right? Ansible will, will manage things outside of the of your Kubernetes cluster. Um, some people use Terraform for that. That's fine. You know, you'll 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 see puppets still out there. It, all of that's fine. How to manage things outside your cluster. So these are kind of the tools that you'll see a lot out there. Um, and so so you, you decided to get ops, right? So so you've decided to get ops. This reminds me of a pamphlet. Um, so you wanted to get started with GitOps and you read that GitOps is kind of like infrastructure as code that you'll be using Git. So what do you do? You take all your YAML, you dump it in a Git repo to get started, right? It's cool. Yeah, you're, you're GitOpsing now, but now you're running into issues, right? What about different clusters? What about environmental differences? What about scaling? How do I scale this out? Um, you know, dumping everything into a Git repo was cool at first, but you're having trouble trying to um, deploy it to different clusters, right? And so... Um, you want to avoid duplications of YAML, right? Because, you know, hey, you're, 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 you can deploy across multiple clusters, cool, but how do you manage that without copying YAML everywhere? And so um, first tip is to use Customize, right? So you use Customize. Uh, it's essentially a patching framework built into Kubernetes. So, you know, I can spend a whole hour talking about Customize, but the idea is that you have a base um, Configuration, right? So you have a base configuration um, with all the the YAML, kind of that YAML that you initially dumped into that Git repo. Well, you will put that in a base configuration, and then you will um, you'll overlay your changes, right? So you you kind of overlay the deltas between environments, right? So for example, if you have a deployment, maybe the scale is different between dev and uh, prod. Maybe the secret you're referencing is different from dev to prod. You don't have to copy that same um, deployment YAML multiple times. Like you have one base, hence the name base. We use base a lot. And then you overlay the deltas, right? Pretty simple. Um, it sounds more complex than it is. It's actually really, really simple to get started, right? You have things like uh, for those OpenShift users, you have like a deployment, a service, and a route. Very common uh, for a Kubernetes user route. Same thing as ingress. Um, in, in OpenShift, we support both, but, um, we first came out with route. So we have route. So in dev, maybe the route is different. It'll definitely be different, right? The, the ingress point will definitely be different in that it is from dev to test. So you kind of overlay the deltas, uh, keeping the, the originals intact, right? So it, it basically renders, um, what you, what you tell it to. So, 
Next is Helm, right? So now, um, now we're going into actual templating, right? So Helm is a uh, package manager for Kubernetes. I'm not going to go into very, very uh, deep detail in Helm. Again, you can spend a whole hour talking about Helm. Um, um, and there's probably others that are smarter than I that can talk about Helm in, in more intelligent way. But Helm is essentially, think about like app get or DNF for Kubernetes, right? So you want to, um, the idea is, is that, um, you know, you have a, you have a chart, right? Or a template of uh, what they call a Helm chart. And you have the values that you want to apply to that Helm chart. And then Helm will then, um, uh, render out YAML based on those two onto your Kubernetes cluster, right? And so on the Kubernetes cluster, there's releases, right? Uh, you know, for example, the Bitnami is very, very popular. Bitnami, MySQL um, a cluster, right? So MySQL, you know, HA cluster, uh, there's a Helm chart for that. And so, you know, you kind of input things like, you know, uh, username, passwords, things like that, right? Um, things that you want to templatize. So this kind of looks like this. Um, so for, um, um, uh, it's essentially go, go templates, right. And you can do things like, like if statements and, you know, um, uh, loops and you can render things to YAML. So it's, it's actually, you know, it's, it's go line template under the covers. You don't really need to know that unless you're building them. Um, you don't really need to know that. It's just the, the, the idea is to use templating. Um, so that way you're not copying that same deployment. In, in this example, there's a deployment over and over and over and over again. So um, how it works, right? Right, you have uh, on the left here, you see the values.yaml file. Cool, YAML's dot, um, uh, uh, the values.yaml file has uh, your options, right? So the, you know, it says, okay, here are, you know, context stir equals this. Uh, the mode equals that, right? Like it's basically key value, key value, key value in in a in, in a structured um, language, right? So it's like here's YAML. I think now we can all just say like YAML is now the the language, right? A cloud native, because I think we've all been dealing with YAML for so long. Um, and on the right is basically how to render those. And so um, you know, you say, hey, install this um, install this application, and then put my values there. So. Um, you have a, um, um, you know, here it'll render the deployment here. Uh, what's really, really cool about um, uh, about Helm and and Customize is that since one, since Customize is a um, uh, a patching framework that's built into Kubernetes, like every GitOps tool supports it essentially, right? And so you have Ar Argo CD Flux, ACM, right? There's even um, uh, modules for Ansible to, you know, to, um, uh, to interact with Customize and Helm. And so Helm also is also supported by Argo City and Flux and ACM. So it's, it's essentially become the de facto standard how to deploy an app, um, um, how to deploy that. So really cool question. So uh, would we use one uh, versus the other? The answer is, is, is that it's not versus, it's a yes and. Uh, question. Great question, right? I get to ask that a lot. It's a yes and, right? You're going to use both in tandem, right? You're you're going to use one over the other. Uh, I know some organizations that have their application, but they're using uh, a Helm chart to deploy something that supports their application. So, for example, if like I'm a front end um, developer, right? I'm doing Node.js and I am um, I'm deploying a uh, uh, a front end, right, with some middleware and then a database back end. Um, I'm using the Bitnami for, you know, my, um, uh, for my database deployment. So I'm using a Helm chart with customized for my application and the back end. So you're kind of using both, um, you know, you're, you're using um, both, right? So customize, patching framework, um, and also the... Um, the uh, templating is to use uh, use Helm, and so um, so best practices for Git workflows. And so I'm gonna kind of just kind of drill through these uh, really quick, right? I have like a few slides left, right? So um, controversy here, everyone knows oh, this is a controversial subject. I always say separate your YAML from your application code, separate them. Um, yes, I'm really serious. Yeah, you, they'll have independent life cycles. So the idea is that. Your application code is going to have constant commits and testing on it, whereas your deployment code 
doesn't really change all that often. I mean, it does change, but not in the same cadence, right? And um, and also there's other um, um, uh, other other things that you need to uh, keep in mind um, that goes along with this, right? You use uh, directories for environment variables, um, not branches. Yes, I'm being serious, right? So like a lot of the things that developers do that may seem natural to do with your uh, GitOps repos is, is actually not, right? They, they have, you know, even though you're using Git, you're using different Git workflows. Um, you're not using branches. Um, uh, Costas from, um, from CodeFresh has an amazing blog about why you would, um, why you don't use branches, right? Why, why you would use directories. But the idea is that a promotion, right? A merge is never simple, right? Because if you're mer merging from dev to prod, you're not merging the whole thing, right? You're, you're only merging things, you know, like the, uh, like the secrets. The secrets are going to be different. The scale is going to be different. How do you only merge a subset of, it, it just gets really complicated. I can go on and on about that. But um, use directory for environments, meaning leverage, uh, customize. And so um, use trunk-based development, right? So, you know, we're going against all grains, right? Don't use branches. Don't use release branches. Use uh, short-lived, um, uh, feature branches, right? And then you work off a, a trunk or AKA main. Yes, we're deploying for main. You can call it whatever you want. But the idea is that you, you have a, a short-lived uh, feature branch. And, um, you know, once it's merged into the main trunk, you delete your feature branch. Um, and if you want to know more about trunk-based development, uh, you can just Google trunk-based development. It's the first hit. Um, and find out more about uh, trunk based development and you can you know hit me up on on slack or twitter and you know talk more about why um why that works for for GitOps, right and so uh last but not least use protected branches right so you know most people can get behind this um basically branch protection rules you know don't allow force pushes um you know protect against accidental delete deletion and it forces code review right and approvals so protected branches is also a a good uh a good way and so i see that i'm about a couple minutes over but i am done um <laughs> thank you everyone this this went a lot shorter in my head when i was practicing it but, uh, <laughs> it always does christian it always, it always does. does so so thank you i'll be in the chat if you have any questions i'm gonna be in chat all day so um yeah so anyways i'll, I'll hand this off uh to cornelia here so